beyond the veil of life, there is an awesomeness that awaits. And there is a wonderful feeling uh, for an eternal, wild, crazy kind of time. And I think life has this weight and so many people um, feel weighed down by that weight and they feel like they're drowning in whether it's in paperwork or work or a job or kids or the house or this or that or being a mother or a father or um, you know, or trauma, or uh, the rage that we feel at our existential existence in general. And there's value in the frequency of our lives. that is diverse and rare to experience and that rarity makes it worth it to wish that every moment, every second that you wasted not wanting life, that life was wanting you. It's just a matter of, did you answer? And I think life wants us. I think life has a will, has a way, has a wonder about it. And the greatest adventure is to be around, to be we, to be us. Um, We are a unified kind of soul in those varying degrees in that rarity of really what makes us us. Where do I fit is a big question that I've had most of my life. And up till recently, I hadn't been challenged with the question at the level that I realized it had always been there. And having Asperger's, I, and you don't have to have Asperger's to feel like this, but I always felt like I was in a different world, the wrong planet kind of thing, and, uh, you know, it's like, where is everybody else who's like me, where are the wonderful, weird, quirky, cool, um, 
dudes and, uh, you know, the quirky, uh, interesting, cute, uh, women who, you know, who think in, uh, that very, uh, a studious way where within me there's a kind of loss not having had that level of socialization with people with the same cognitive and linguistic um, views as me from an analytical standpoint and uh, you know emotively uh, affectively um, you can't help but feel discounted because of that my family is a uh, wonderful uh, uh, you know, they're wonderful, but uh, it would be nice to, you know, have my own nation state or something where I could just, you know, kind of relax for once and, you know, where everyone would kind of look in the same perspective and see uh, a light of what really lies inside of me and inside of everybody that is around me and where you walk into a room and uh, you know, everybody assumes that everybody else is their friend and, uh, we all, um, see no strangers and want no wonder or fear no kind of, um, repercussions for, what makes us us. It's kind of wild um, that I want that, I guess, and that I've always wanted that. And I think I've always wanted that in a girlfriend or a wife, but, you know, Ever since I was really little, I, uh, I, ever since I remember, actually, I can remember, um, there was always at least one girl when I was a kid or one woman as an adult who, um, I saw almost like a girlfriend, even though. I was always too afraid to um, ask her out or something like that. And in the rare instance that I did, I found out that it, it really is um, hard to express how we actually feel to a person. And uh, we can't always control the circumstances. And rejection hurts. And it's a dark road. But it's even darker when we contemplate that idea of smoking our last cigarette. Similar to... Uh, what uh, Viktor Frankl says in his uh, 
book, Life's Man's Search for Meaning. And, you know, he talks about, during the Holocaust, the... And I, and I meditate on the Holocaust to learn lessons from the different writings of the individuals who went through it because I want to learn what I mean and why I mean it and what purpose can I serve towards faith and justice and values and honor and dignity and, you know, just human dignity in general. And uh, anybody who puts another person down for their own benefit, you know, there's nothing more backstabbing, but uh, when I wonder about what's beyond that veil, where you go, what you do, what your mind is like, you know, are we just, uh, data particles and, and otherwise energetic electromagnetic field or are we, uh, you know, do we go to some magical palace in the sky or, you know, is God's kingdom for real or, you know, a lot of people um, would argue that's true. Um, I, on the other hand, have always retained a kind of atheistic view, but um, I hold that natural theology is quite in um, a fascinating um, perspective. And the concept of God is one of varying degrees of rarity um, in the mind when we get down to the uh, emotional or affective level of uh, what it means to really be human and I think the evidence is there it's just a matter of you know, we're not all psychic and we can't know what each other is thinking. But somebody's probably, you know, talking to them or um, will talk to God or, you know, speaks in tongues or some bananas thing like that, but uh, where we go with it really it's wanton and yet it's also wondrous and amazing and our existence, you know, has a sense of existential angst and we worry sometimes, but worrying and ruminating over life oftentimes doesn't make life any more enjoyable. But life can be quite the amazing ride and oftentimes I would say 
not what we expect it to be. And I think we expect life to be up to our standards, but it oftentimes fails us, and it fails us for good reason. And the reason, I think, is that we want so many things, but people don't really know what they want. What they really will be happy with is just what is and the challenges that are there. I mean, they range from big problems to small problems. The very search for meaning, you know, Viktor Frankl thought that that was what was the meaning of our lives when he created logotherapy. And where that leaves us is, you know, with this loop and uh, some would say without meaning. It's like, where's the meaning? You know, why haven't I been paid yet? And we're not all going to get paid because uh, not all of us have wallets. Um, Not even bank accounts um, in which to put um, our experiences in, in our existence. And we can't save time and space because it's always getting smaller and the world is getting smaller. And we can't always find that rarity. In reality. But I think we can find it someday. Beyond the veil. But it's often times. Nice to wait until the veil opens up. Because timing is everything when the curtain rises. And if you're not ready, you'll get caught out on stage and everyone will laugh at you. Not really, but, you know, The wayward uh, monk walks in uh, weird ways because he's had a little too much whiskey. Don't want for wanton ways.